Ah, good afternoon. This is your nursing professional development service line. And today we're going to demonstrate the change of a central line pick dressing. So this is our central line pick dressing change kit. You can pull this out of any of the supply rooms. Please note that on the outside of it, it does uh, remind you that you need to wipe down your surface table first. There's a wipe that's included on the other side of the packaging along with a reminder to grab the additional supplies that are not included in the kit, which does include needleless connectors or claves. You'll need to grab as many as you need for however many lines you have. A stat lock if you're changing a dressing on a pick line. And sterile gloves if you wear a size seven and a half or greater, you will need two pairs of sterile gloves. First, we're gonna open up our packaging at the top where you'll note that there is a zipper like, a, like a Ziploc package. And you're gonna open that up and on the other side of the paper is gonna be the wipe that you're gonna to use to clean your table. Depending on which cup of wipe is included in the packaging, it could be a bleach wipe or it could be a Santa wipe. If it is the purple Santa white, please use gloves as this is not to be handled with bare hands. And then you can use the wipe to clean off your table. We want to prepare, prepare as pristine a surface as possible to protect our patients. While our table is drawing, we can get our patient prepared by placing them in an appropriate position. In this case, we've got our patient in a semi to a high Fowler's. You're gonna have their head turned away from the dressing. Have the bed up at a working height. And we're gonna get our field prepared. Next, you're gonna open up your package and you're gonna open it at the opposite end and it's a white peel away. Remove the central dressing kit, place it on your table and you'll notice right away it has a zipper that reminds you to open up the package. All of the packaging has pictograph prompts to remind us of the steps. You're gonna open it up and there are two pockets. There's a removal pocket and an application pocket. We're gonna open the removal pocket first. The removal pocket has a mask for the nurse, a mask for the patient, a pair of sterile gloves, hand hygiene gel, an alcohol swab to remove the soil dressing, a drape and drape tape. First, she's going to place a mask on herself and on the patient. If there's family in the room, this is a good time to ask them to step out of the room briefly while we prepare to take care of our patient. It is preferable for the family to leave the room. Next step, she's gonna drape her patient. Draping the patient is determined by the patient and the, how you're going to approach the patient for the dressing change. So each patient will be draped according to the nurse's need to provide the best uh, work surface possible. Next, she's gonna clean her hands and she's going to be placing sterile gloves on. This is not a sterile part of the procedure. However, we want to provide every opportunity to protect our patient. So we are going to use sterile gloves to provide that extra step of protection. She's gonna clean her hands with the hand hygiene gel that is wrapped up in the packaging for the sterile gloves. She's gonna perform all seven steps of the WHO recommended practice for hand hygiene. When five seconds per each of the step is completed, by the time you have completed to the seventh step, your hands will be dry. Your hands will need to be dry in order to successfully place your sterile gloves on with ease. She's going to open up her sterile glove packaging.
Notice she's only touching the inside of the glove. If your hand doesn't go in, that is okay. We're gonna do a sterile to sterile correction. This is very common, happens all the time. She's gonna pick up her other glove by being looped up underneath the cuff. She's gonna place her hand in. You'll notice she's got her fingers extended out of the way. And now she can correct her hands by sterile to sterile correction. Now she's going to open up her alcohol prep and she's a uh, swab stick and she's going to use this to saturate the dressing and remove the dressing. It deactivates the Cavalon and helps allow the adhesive to release from the skin. When you're completely done saturating the dressing, you can start by removing the top piece of the dressing. I like to think of the central line dressing as a the main dressing is a shirt for the pa patient and a pair of pants and a little belt. We're gonna take that little piece off on top first and you can just put it on the back of your glove. And then she's gonna split her dressing underneath the lines. There is a perforation underneath that will help you pull that dressing away from the patient's skin. As you're peeling the dressing, you want to kind of peel it and cuff it on itself. You'll notice that she secures it to the patient without touching the insertion site. When you have the entire dressing lifted up away from the skin, then you're going to pull in one final movement towards the insertion site, preventing the disruption or removal of the line. If the line was to be inadvertently pulled out some or pulled out all the way, we would immediately want to notify the provider because you would not push a line back in. Next step, she's gonna open up the second pocket, which is the application pocket. She's gonna remove her sterile gloves and hand hygiene, set it to the side, and now she's gonna open up her sterile field. Pinch here, pull it open with a gentle upward popping motion that will open up your field. You can note that the uh, one half to an inch all the way around is not sterile. So you can grab that field and adjust it and move it out of your way or into a way and do a position that's more effective without breaking your sterility. She's gonna clean her hands again and put her final set of sterile gloves on. Note that she has not turned her back on her sterile field. note that she's extended the thumb on the gloved hand away from her. That is the most common place for folks to accidentally contaminate their gloves. Next she's going to pull out her 4x4 and her uh, CHG swabette. She opens up her 4x4, pops the ampule on the CHG scrubber. She's gonna put the four by four that provides a place for her to hold down that line and anchor it. And starting over the insertion site, first you wanna scrub it vigorously. We're gonna start at the insertion site in a cross hatch or hashtag motion, and then clean over the device. You really wanna press down when you're over the device so that the CHG will wick up underneath it. And you're gonna clean around everywhere underneath that dressing in hashtags or cross hatch motion. Skin lays down in uh, layers like scales, not in a line. And so if we don't 
if we clean just in one direction, we're not gonna get CHG up underneath all of those skin cells. We wanna scrub for a total of 30 seconds and not cross back over that insertion site. And then we're gonna allow it to dry for 30 seconds. The dyeing is in the drying. If it was ephemeral line, we would scrub for two minutes and do a two minute dry. Now she's opened up her Cavalon and she's going to paint in a window pane fashion everywhere where the adhesive is touching the patient. This lays down a layer of plastic so that the dressing will attach to this layer of plastic. When we go to remove the dressing, then what we're removing is a layer of plastic and not a layer of epidermis. Please note that it is in a window pane fashion. It is not to go around the skin, around the insertion site, or anywhere where the CHG gel pad touches the skin. Otherwise, the, in, the CHG can actually get into the insertion site. Finally, she's gonna pull her dressing out. Sometimes it can stick a little and you may have to anchor as you pull it out. And she's gonna pull off the backing. The backing says 3M, that's the back side of the dressing. That's the sticky side. She's gonna orient that so the center of the CHG gel pad is directly over the center of the insertion site. You will not be able to get the entire device under the gel pad. It just needs to have the insertion site squared up to the center of the CHG gel pad so there is a constant delivery of CHG to the insertion site and the skin immediately surrounding it. You'll note she secured it to the skin and then placed her palm of her hand over it. The heat from her hand helps activate the dressing and provides additional securement. Finally, she's splitting away the last two portions of the dressing. This is the, as I noted before, the patient's belt in his, that's his belt in his pants is that little half dressing with the notch. She's gonna lift up her lines and that's where that piece of the dressing is gonna go. If you split it from the back side, it will, the tab will keep it from sticking to your gloves. And then you'll note that she's orienting it underneath the lines on top of the other dressing to close the gap in the dressing. Close that gap, close that little hole there. She'll place her draped lines back over, remove those final little tabs so that there's no gaping in the dressing. The final piece is the patient's belt and that's gonna cross over that gap that's still there between the patient's main dressing, their shirt, and their little half dressing, which is their pants. Close that gap, make sure it's nice and secure. Remove those final two little pieces of plastic tabbing. Date, time, and initial, and then she's going to document this in Epic. Finally, she's gonna change out her clays. Please note that we change out our needleless connectors or our claves every single time we change our dressing. We change our dressings on Wednesdays, even if this was placed on a Monday or a Tuesday. You'll note she clamped her line. She's gonna remove her clave and discard it. That's the old one. Sometimes folks have really strong arms and they're real helpful and they ratchet them down for you. And then she's going to use that alcohol prep and she's really going to scrub the hub. That's a 30 second scrub and then a 30 second dry. Dying's in the drying. When she's completely done with her scrubbing and the drying, she will attach her pre-primed flushed needleless connector. They are not sterile, so do not throw them on your, or place them on your sterile field. She's gonna connect it securely, unclamp it, and a gentle pulsing, like a pulsatile pumping action, she's gonna flush. That prevents the development of biofilm at the tip of the catheter, which can lead to infection and catheter occlusion. She's gonna finish up the process by placing a brand new Kuros or swab cap on which is our alcohol impregnated cap. These are soon single use only. They do not replace scrub the hub. That's the final part. You can keep a bag of them on your pole or you can ask your unit tuck to please carry them on and help you out. 
Unit techs can place Wabra Kuros caps on our lines, peripheral and central. It is not an invasive uh, intervention. It is part of our CLAPSI prevention. Uh, we also want to make sure that we are changing again our dressings every Wednesday, even if that line has just recently been placed. If the patient comes with a line that's prior to arrival, the dressing needs to be changed within eight hours. The best way to prevent CLAPSI or central line associated bloodstream infections is to not have a central line in place that doesn't need to be in place and then to question them every shift and get them out as quickly as possible. The second best management process, uh, practice is good hand uh, hygiene and line management and only handling our IV lines, whether they're peripheral or central, while we have gloves on. CHG bathing is required every 24 hours. They can be used warmed or they can be used at room temperature. From underneath the chin to the tips of the toes, front and back, not including the face or genitalia, this can be delegated to your unit tuck and all the unit tucks do know how to do a sage wipe down. Please reference them as wipe downs or CHG, CHG uh, wipe intervention as opposed to bathing. It does not replace bathing. Final tips, we wanna make sure that our lines are capped appropriately. So we're gonna use red sterile end caps on our lines. Should you find a line that does not have a red sterile cap on or has been ported into itself, the entire line has to be discarded. Once that line's been ported into itself, it creates micro fractures inside the tubing, which will lead to pump alarms that cannot be cleared. Some final tips, check your dressings, make sure that they're not boggy, make sure they're not gaping. If the dressing is complicated, it should be done by an RN. Otherwise, changing of a central line can be done by RNs and LVNs. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it and see you in the learning pod.